Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Um, good day, everyone. I hope everyone is okay. Uh, I'm Steven Binara from the Office of Soul. So, before we begin this session, let me remind you to please uh, mute your microphone and rename your zone name to your complete name and department so that we can identify you and you may turn on your video camera if you want during this session and later uh, there will be an open forum regarding to this session and please type it in the chat box or use the raise hand in zoom reaction button and and mute yourself reminders uh, this session is video recorded and recording will be made available at the Silliman Online University Learning website and also to our YouTube channel. Just search Silliman Online University Learning. Then don't forget to subscribe to it so that you can watch other previous e-trainings that we have conducted. Today, we will have an interesting topic to talk about uh, gamifying content delivery and assessment using it's uh, This is uh, part one and part two, and our training trainers for this session is our Mr. Jade Montimayor and assistant professor Alfikio Asila, faculty member of the Office of Soul. Let's give them our virtual applause. Thank you. Hello everyone, maayong buntag. Okay, maayong buntag sa tanan. So, um hi to I could actually yeah, I hi to Ma'am Debbie, Sir Jasper, Ma'am Rosalie and Ma'am Vicky. Hi, everyone. So let me share my screen. Okay, so once again, good morning. And today is uh, a very interesting one because 
um, we will have a very, uh, this is not, this is something that everyone is intrigued in using yet, uh, maybe because we had, it's more like the advanced features part of Seoul. That's why um, not everyone is um, skilled in using this one. Um, in fact, we at Seoul, we, we, because uh, later on you will see the, the many features of how to make content using H5P. So we could actually just master like maybe two or three, or maybe eventually when uh, all throughout the year, we could master like five or seven. No? So um, for this morning, um, we are supposed to um, give both parts one and two. So we will have like two uh, basic um, content ma uh, makers using H5P and then three more advanced ones. So um, just so we'll have an idea of what we will have. So H5P is actually um, the shortcut for HTML5 package, which is uh, when we say HTML, HTML, it's actually a language or let's just say a software wherein we use the, we use the, we use it for the creation or structure and presentation of anything we, we see in the worldwide, worldwide web or internet contents. No? So um, it doesn't just cater to, it doesn't just cater to uh, pictures or images. So it also has audio, video. So um, in here, you will see later on that um, so basics, we could just, uh, we could actually just utilize images and then maybe in advanced uh, features of uh, H5P, you could actually embed, no, you could just actually place uh, a lot more, a lot more um, uh, types of um, uh, elements in there. But um, um, later on also, we will see that uh, maybe for some of you who, who have already had the chance to um be with us during the first few uh, training sessions for H5P. It was supposedly like a black, um, a black niyahang um, morag background for H5P. It's because the blue one is the updated version, and then for us here in Seoul, it gives us the chance to be conditioned that we're actually we're actually um, making something within Seoul. No, but it's really that we're making it in um, h5p.org. It's just that um, because of that, uh, because of that compatibility, uh, the interface that we have is we're just using our sole interface, yet we're making contents in h5p. Uh, actually, h5p is uh, an open source, uh, an open source. Um, Thing. So that means we could actually make use of that one um, in either in either platforms that we use. Like for example, if we have like a website or an educational website, you could actually embed no. So makita siya. Um, um, when you when you go to h5p.org, you will see uh, the contents, the variety of contents that you could use. So we have this one no. Um, um, we have from even an advent calendar, we have an accordion. So that means uh, it will be used like with images. And then you, if you'd want to have just an audio recorder, you could have that one. And then dialogue box, uh, there, there, there really is a lot. And then for us here, we will have drag and drop. I know that uh, many of you are already familiar with drag and drop, especially in making the quiz, but uh, in here, drag and drop would be just like maybe a formative activity just to check if your students have really seen um, your uh, your notes in order for you to be able to let them uh, do the drag and drop. And of course, um, this is uh, more, let's say, when it comes to when it comes to the drag and drop using the quiz, this is quite um, visual, no? Kanang mas, mas chada siya tanawon. And then uh, later on with Sir Jade, we will have flashcards. And then what else? Sorry. So there, uh, we will also have image pairing and image sequencing. So that will be very useful also. Um, and then uh, with me, actually, the first thing that I will do is course presentation. The course presentation here is, um, this is not actually a very basic uh, feature, yet 
assuming that every one of us already have our slides, we will just convert our slides. We won't have to make our slides within uh, within um, H5P. We will just convert our slides to images and then just place it as background, and then they could just go through it. No, um, what's good about it later on is we'll just also give you tips on how you would be able to maximize uh, H5P because um, it doesn't mean that you have made it just once. You could only just use it also once. Okay, so let's start the ball rolling. So um, we will, as mentioned earlier, we will be we will make use of. Um, we will make use of Sol. Okay. There you go. So in here, so we are very much familiar with this one already, create learning activity and of course drop the file. So we are always using this create learning activity um, element, so feature. So we click on create learning activity and then we click on all and then we, we will see two icons for H5P. So this is the one that's uh, the the old one and this is the new one. So we will use the new one so that we could have um, the impression that we are making something here or in Seoul. So we click on that, okay? And of course we will uh, try to, we will try to pattern our, like for me, it will be evolution of ICT in education. So I'll have that one. I will make it as my title, okay? So you also have other um, other options. So if you want it to be downloadable, no? So later on, you will understand why there is such an option for, you, for them to be able to download it. Um, and then uh, grade if you want to, if you want to like um, have it graded. So uh, maximum will be maybe, five points or uh, it would it would really it would really vary if if you want to make it um, just a formative um, formative assessment for you so there and then in this portion now in this portion you have used the content bank and this would mean um, we will be directed to another window. So this, if we click on this one, this means it has, uh, it already, if we already have contents in H5P, uh, it will also show there. But if we don't have, then this is also the, the, the page where we could uh, make our own. So if you click on that one, you are redirected to this page. So if you see, um, the interface is just Seoul, but we are actually trying to make our content already through H5P. And in this button, okay, um, if you see that there's no content available, then that means uh, you don't have any um, H5P content yet. So I click on add, and then all the other, uh, features are for content making are here. So what I have showed you earlier, they're all actually here, no? Okay. So I click on course presentation, okay? And then we have this one. So we are actually already ready to, to use this one, okay? So we have we can actually add slides. We could actually clone slides or duplicate slides if we are offline with PowerPoint, okay? And then slide background, if you want to make your own background, but as I have mentioned earlier, um, if we will have to use or do everything within this portion, then that means it's not a basic feature anymore. So what, I, what we will do is we will just convert our PowerPoint slides to images. So let me share to you my, my slides. 
Can you see my slides? Yes. Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, no? Okay, yes, ma'am. I will try to. Okay. So how to convert your slides to, to images? So all you have to do is click on File, Save As, and then because um, it will create multiple images, make sure to also um, um, have your own folder for the multiple images. For me, I have prepared this one, okay? And then in Save As Type, you click on JPEG, okay? Because it's like the smallest size uh, image file. And then when you click on save, you will be asked if you just want one, the, uh, the one that you have clicked on or all the slides. So if you'd want to use all the slides, you click all slides. Okay. And it's already available. So if you look into evolution, so I have all the slides available already. So, so there, okay, let me unshare again. And then let's go back to, Let's go back to where we have started, okay? So in here, because we're already in slide one, so I, what I will do is I will just click on image, okay? And then I'll click on add. I locate my first image for this particular uh, set of slides, and then I'll click that one, okay? And then done, and I have my image here. And what I will do is I will just um, uh, have it. Uh, so usually I will just have like a uniform size for this one. So I will have like 620 and 465 for all the slides that I will have. And then I'm done with the first slide. I'll go to the next slide and do the same thing. Okay. So for this one, I will just like have uh, five uh, content slides. Okay. Another one. We're almost done with the fifth content slide. There you go. And then um, so that there is um, interaction or engagement, student engagement, they will not just um, look into the slides. I will make my, my last slide as like 
a um, a short, maybe a quiz, or I will ask a question or two so that they will be able to really at least go back if they haven't read it while well, they are just um, um, going through the slides. Okay. So for my last slide, I will just add, actually, you could have your own background, okay? But for me, so that I will be, uh, I will be consistent with the other slides of mine, I will just place like uh, an empty slide, a blank slide with that theme. There. Okay, and then I have choices here on what I will be using. So in here, I will just choose uh, multiple choice. You could also have true or false and then drag and drop still. You could have that one. And then uh, for, for me, I will just have like one question. Okay, and then in here I will place my question, sorry. Sorry about that. I was disconnected. Let me share that one again. Were we able to to be to to capture this one? Ah, uh, hello, ma'am. Yes. After after uh, sa create learning, unsa gito i press gani, ma'am? Sorry, ma'am, na, na late. Create ko. learning activity H5P with a blue background. Okay, so di ko na lost. Okay, anyway, ma'am, this is recorded, so you could go back to the recording later on. Okay, okay so in here. So I will place, okay, which is the correct answer. And then I will have other options. So and then if you want to add options, you could just click in that in that button. Um, it doesn't uh, you could have you could have more options if you want. And then, who else? Some other, Benjamin Franklin. Okay. Okay. Once you're done, okay, you're, if you feel like it's, that's already fine, then you could click on done. 
working there. So you could have like, you could have that one here. You could have like two questions in a, in a slide or you could have one question in a slide. Anyway, um, you, you have your choice. So mine, I will just have it that way, okay? So by the way, I'll just be consistent with my okay there. If um if you have already those slides ready, and then you'll also have made your uh, questions right after your slides, then you're already done. You could save your work. Sir Jade, um, is this, uh, because this is embedding, is this still, uh, is the 5 MB still applicable? Uh, for Seoul, ma'am, we cannot embed. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, we have to upload, no? So that means yes, the 5 MB, uh, is it 5 MB, sir, no? Yes, ma'am. 5 MB is still applicable. That's mm -hmm. why um, for us teachers, we don't have to like, like, um, I, I have many slides, like 20 slides, but I could actually um, um, make two of these for one for one particular lesson so that um, we will we will still be able to upload it. Okay, so there you go. It's here. Now at the side, okay, at the side we have this like not so clear or translucent gear. Okay, so remember that we are just conditioned in making it within Seoul, but we're actually not. We're still making it in H5B. That's why we have to download it and upload it in Seoul later on. So what we do is we click on the, on the gear and then we click on download. So we're still downloading our content. Okay, and then we go back to our, we go back to our, uh, tab where we were editing our H5P, okay? So it's actually the same tab that we open, no? Or we are, we it's opened when we click on the H5P from the create content activity, a learning activity, sorry. And then in here, no? Um, it's either just the same as other files. You have the option to drag it or upload it. So for me, I will just drag it. Okay. So let's have to wait a while. Even if it's fully read, we have to wait that and see the, the attachment. If it's already done, then we could click on save and display or save and return to course. So for me, save and display so that I could see it right within the topic. Okay. So it would look like this. Uh, if you are part of the MISO training course, you could actually uh, you could actually access it in uh, gamifying content delivery. It's actually uh, at the bottom part of the topics, and then you could try it so that so most of the times, if it's just um, if it's just the slides, most of the times our students will just um, download it and then keep it. They won't even read it. No, so in here they have to read it within within Seoul because um, you could actually you could actually um, they could they have to they have to like answer no answer the 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 mini quiz or the set of questions right after a series of slides um, again if if um, you have set it 
in the settings portion of this particular H5P content, then you could actually place whatever score you will have. Okay, so so there you go. So for example, I click, I checked on the wrong one, so it will give me that. And then, yeah, solution would mean uh, the right answer. So that means I am um, the student will be given the right answer. And the last slide will actually give you the set of questions and the right answer and your score if you were the student. So there you go. And then you could retry if you have, uh, if it, there's a series of questions in there and then they'd want to, it's also, they could actually retry. So this is very good for uh, formative um, activities, no? Or um, just so you would have uh, an idea that they went through and have read your content. So for the second one, we will make use of the drag and drop uh, content maker for uh, H5P. So we click again on create learning activity and then click on all tabs and then click on the H5P icon or button with the blue black background. Then we place our title, like for this one, it will be parts of the flower, of a flower. And then we will also place a description or uh, the instruction. Okay. And then if you want to grade it, like for this one, it will be four points. Okay, and then let's click on content bank. Okay, and then we click on add. This time we click on drag and drop. I'm using that one. Okay, and then parts of a flower. And then we add a background. There we go. And then we could adjust the size so it would be bigger. And then there would be more space also for your answers. Once we're done with that one, so that is our adjusted size for our for our image, and then we have to place the designated drop zones first before we add our text. For this one, I will just add the four at the left portion, so I will add drop zones to four of them. Uh, for the label, it is just like the the title, so I will just place like numbers. And then I'll place it here. So that means uh, it will be covered. Okay, another one, two, there. Our third. And lastly, our fourth. So we'll just have this four, this first four in the left portion for this uh, demonstration. Okay, so we're ready to, to place uh, the text and uh, also to assign the particular answer for that particular drop zone. So we click on this one. And then we'll have to select all four drop zones for this one. And then we'll place the correct answer. Like for the first one, it is stigma. And then we click on done. Okay. And then once we have that one, we could actually also um, resize it. 
in such a way that it covers the whole drop zone again and then we place it someplace so that um, it will be like uh, the place where the students could um, drag it to that particular drop zone and then we double click on the first drop zone okay and then we will click on stigma because that is the correct answer for that one and then we click on done okay and then we click on the second text so we have to select all and then this time it's style the answer is style then we click on done there you go again resize it accordingly and then we click on style because it's the second answer we click on our third text select all and then the third answer is sepal there you go just like with the others you can resize okay we click on our uh, drop zone label this time we click on sepal because it's the answer and then lastly we create our fourth text which is ovary and then we select all drop zones okay and then There you go. And then we click our last drop zone label, and then we click on over E, and then we click on done. Once we are done with everything, like for this one, I'll just have the four. There you go. Okay. And then we click on save. Okay. So let's try to have this one first, or let's uh, have a trial here just to check if our work is okay before we download it. So we click on here, stigma there, style here, and, and then we try to check. So everything's already good. Then at this, this portion again, this translucent um, gear, we click on it and then we click on download because we could download that one. We will upload that one in our editing H5P um, tab. So we'll click on our editing H5P tab and then we'll just drop the, okay, we'll just drop the file in there again let's make sure that it's fully attached or it's fully uploaded and then we click on save and display so here it is so let's try if this works on the actual page in in Seoul. Stigma, we have style, okay. and then we have sepal. So there, it's actually there. So you could actually um, try it yourself later on. So that's it for the second one. Uh, we will have our Q and A later after Sir Jade is done. So I will now give. Or, yeah, I will now give the floor to Sir Jade for more interesting um, topics on H5P. Thank you, Mom Alfie. Uh, well, by the way, before we proceed, I just have to say that uh, the following H5P 
animations or assessments that we were going to talk about is just a continuation of uh, this. These are just some of the basic uh, H5P uh, animation assessments. Um, the the one that was discussed earlier by Mam Alfie is, is is more advanced. The the one with slides, right? So let me just share my screen. Okay. Right. So I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, uh, sir. When we talk, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Steve. When we talk about H5P, um, usually we, we think about the interactive video because again, this is what the this is like the flagship product of H5P, the, the one that I'm showing right now. And this is the interactive video, right? Well, how do we set up something like a, like an interactive video? This is actually pretty easy. So we we do have a tutorial about setting up an interactive video. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to give you the link for that video. So if you take a look at your chat box, here, let me just not chat. So that's the link of uh, the video in terms of how do we create um, contents like this, contents like an interactive video. So we have a tutorial, uh, kindly watch. It's in, uh, it's posted in YouTube in uh, the Seoul page or Silliman Online University Learning page. This particular tutorial was uh, done by Sir Fredly Bukog. Okay. So the, the main topics that we're going to talk about today is just about um, we have flashcards. How do we make flashcards using H5P? How do we, make, how do we create uh, image pairing assessments using H5P? And of course, image sequencing. So I will give you a link to all the contents that I will be using today, just in case uh, you want to practice while we are discussing on how to proceed with those following um, animations or H5P assessments. So I already sent the link in your chat box just in case you want to follow, right? Let me just go back here. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, if you want to like, if you want to look at examples of H5P, let's just say uh, how does an arithmetic quiz assessments looks like in H5P, how does a dialogue cards looks like in H5P, what you can do is you can just go to h5p.org. Here, this link, uh, let me just check this one. This is basically the main website of H5P. Any users can create a free account on H5P and can use the features posted in this platform. So again, if you want to check how different assessments looks like in H5P, you can just go to h h5p.org. And then from the site, you can go to examples and downloads. And from here, you can actually look up to different assessments. And then you can just, for example, you want to see how flashcard, uh, flashcards looks like in H5P. Then you can just click flashcards. And then from here, usually you have two examples. Naman. So here you have, uh, these are examples of flashcards. You have one of three, so you have three examples. The first example is this one. We have different fruits. So this is how flashcard looks like in H5P, right? So like, for example, if you want to see how um, drag and drop maybe looks like in H5P, the one that was being discussed by Mam Alfie earlier, then you can just click drag and drop and then here. This uh, particular drag and drop example, uh, in terms of the drop zone, the drop zone is not visible. So it's really up to the students where to drop the particular items. So that's it. Uh, that's it's more of uh, H5P, how this H5P uh, um, contents looks like. These are basically examples. And for some reason that, if for, for example, you want to use the contents here, uh, in the examples, then you what you can do is like, for example, the, the flashcards and you want to use it, you want to reuse this particular content in your virtual classroom. What you can do is, uh, if you take a look at the lower, uh, lower left side of the actual assessments, you have three functions. You have reuse, rights of use, and you had embed. If you have websites, then you can, of course, you can embed. 
But if you want to post this one as an assessment in your virtual classroom, you can always click reuse. So what it will do is it will just download the entire content. See, it will says uh, download an H5P file, download this one. And here we are. So we can now then reuse this one in our classroom. So how do we do that? Uh, we can go here. This is like a sample virtual classroom. So again, uh, for H5P moving forward, we will be using the content bank or the uh, H5P content bank. Here, from your course page, you can go to settings and then content bank, right? So again, what we're going to do is we're going to upload the sample flashcard file that we have from the H5P website or H5P uh, flat, uh, platform. So from here, from the content bank, uh, you have upload on the upper right portion of your content bank, right? So you can just click upload and then you can drag and drop files to this particular area or you can choose a file from this button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag and drop. So downloads and then flashcards. It's uploading now. So it's finished and then I just have to click save changes. So from here, I can then use it in uh, one of my activities. Like for example, I will go back here and then I will create an H5P, right? Uh, well, before I do that, always don't forget to download uh, your contents before you can uh, use it in your virtual classroom. So make sure to download it first and then go back here and I will create a learning activity. I'll just put it in topic two. So I will use the H5B with a blue background to say this is a sample flashcard activity. Sample flashcard, and then I will upload a file. So this one, upload, and yeah, save and display. So from this uh, page or from this area, students can now uh, try to answer your H5P assessments. So that's how you reuse contents from the H5P website. So if you want to use templates, if you want to use examples from the H5P website, you can then open that particular example you can click the reuse function here at the lower left side of the, the actual assessment. And then you can upload that on your virtual classroom. Any question? Wala ra? <clears throat> Sige. Uh, hi, Ma'am Credo. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining. All right, uh, let's continue. Continue. So again, our main topic is about the flashcards. We have image pairing and then we'll proceed with image sequencing. So how do you create a flashcard using H5P? Okay, so from your course page, um, what you can do is uh, there are actually multiple ways in terms of how do we start. Uh, you can always click the H5P activity from the add learning activity areas, or you can always start from the content bank. Uh, in my case, uh, since Mom Alfie started from Create Learning Activity, uh, I just I will just show you that you can also start from the content bank, okay? So from the course page, you can go to settings and then go to the content bank. Okay, so let me just delete the sample flashcard that I had earlier, all right? So creating a flashcard is just like any other uh, content from H5P. So you always have to start with the add button here at the upper portion. So you have to click add and then just look for flashcard. Okay. There. So these are your settings of your flashcard H5P activity. So the title, just say this is a sample flashcard or if you have like, for example, a specific topic, yeah, then you can just put it in the title. The task description is just, uh, yeah, you can have it 
know the different parts of the world. So this, the task description, this is where you're going to input the actual instruction of how to proceed with your H5B assessment so that the students will know what, what they're going to do in terms of opening your assessments, right? And then if you'll notice, you have card one and it's a blank card. So here I will use these examples. So for card one, the answer will be uh, Big Ben. And then if you have like a text question, you can also do that. But in my case, I will be using image as the actual text. And then the student will then uh, determine what this particular image is, right? So I will not be using the question, this part. Uh, this part is also optional, so that's, that's fine. And then the answer is, uh, yeah, that's the Big Ben. And then to add the image, I can just click add. And then I'll just look for that particular image. There you go. You can always uh, use the alternative text for image. For, for example, the students are having a hard time loading the image because their internet connection is not that good. Then the alternative text for image will do just fine. Okay. Or you can also include some tips in terms of, so that the students will know that what this, what, what is the definition of this particular place for, for an instance. So let's just say, uh, I'll just look for an example from Wikipedia, right? So here, uh, it is the nickname for the great bell. Yeah, let me just use this one as a tip, okay? So from here, I'll just type, yeah, there you go. And then that's it. Are we gonna require the user to input an answer before they can view the, sol the, the solution? Of course, yes. Uh, is the answer case sensitive? Meaning, uh, does it follow a certain particular sets of cases? Like it should start with a capital case or a lower case. Uh, if yes, uh, since this is a name of a place, then let's just make it a case sensitive. And then that's it. Uh, you now have your card one. So what's next? So what's, what's the next card? So we're just going to add card. And then we have here add card. Then the next card will be about this one, Colosseum. Sorry. So I'll just, yeah. And then I'm going to add the image. And I will not just be using the tip now. I'll just have the tip from for card one. And then that's it. Uh, again, to add, to add another card, it's the same process, right? So the third card would be about the Eiffel Tower. So there you go. And then we can add the image, the Eiffel Tower. Sorry, I'll just open it. And then let's just say I have five cards na lang. So add card, the next card is about the Taj Mahal. And then to add the image, I'll just have to open this. And then lastly, our last card is about the, the, the White House. Let's just say this is the White House. Okay, and then we're going to add the image for the White House. Okay, so from here, I think you're set with your flashcards. So what we're gonna do is we're going to save it. Save. And so that we can use this one in your virtual classroom, don't forget to always download your H5P creation from your content bank, right? So from here, just uh, click the gear icon at the upper right side and then click download. Okay. And then uh, let's go back to your course page. And from the course page, let's just say you are at topic number three as of the moment. You just have to create learning activity and then use the H5B with the blue background. This is, uh, oh, yeah, it's a sample flashcard. Sorry, I'm used to naming contents like sample contents. Let's just say this is places, right? Okay. And then you can always include description if you have some special description for this particular assessment. 
And then for the file, uh, you can then uh, upload the file, choose file. So I'll go to downloads. This is the file that I just downloaded and then upload. Always remember of the limit, the, the site limit of 5 MB. So how do you check the, the file size of a particular file? So for example, how do you check the file size for this one you can you can actually hover your mouse so just don't click just hover your mouse over that particular file and it will display the size so currently it says 1.08 mb or alternatively you can also right click the file and then go to properties and then from there you can actually see the size which is 1.08 mb okay so we now have our file and then you just click save So let's just say I will change my, I will just go back here so that we can simulate uh, from the student's perspective. I will switch role and then switch role as a student. Okay, my H5P activity about the flashcard is in topic number three. And let me, this one, so I'll just, as a student, I'm going to open it and this is what I can see. So you have the picture and then your answer. So you cannot check for the solution because you haven't inputted any answer yet. Uh, you can always click the tip. Diba? For the Big Ben, we have we included some tips. So you can just click the tip and then, yeah, there you go. So for example, this is my answer. Take note that this is case sensitive. So like if I will answer, even if I have the right answer, but the case is not right, uh, let me check. See, it's it would be wrong because the, the correct answer is, it's a Big Ben with a capital letter B. Right, so this one, I don't know if I got the, the spelling right. Hope I got it right, check, okay. And then it will, it will then proceed uh, immediately to the next um, card, Eiffel Tower. I hope the spelling is right. Okay, that's capital letter T. So that's how case sensitive works, Ajmahal. Mahal. And then this one is for the White House. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a capital letter H and then check. Okay. And then if you want to see your, your result, basically, so here, this is just a summary of all the items and all the, the items with the correct and right and wrong answers. If you want to retry, you can always proceed with the retry button. Uh, if you're a teacher, you can always uh, restrict retry, right? So how do you restrict retry to particular H5B assessments? So let, let me just go back to the content bank. I will just return to my normal row. Again, how do you restrict retry so that the students will not be able to uh, retake this particular assessment? But then again, please take note that H5B usually is used for formative assessments. So I think it's it's best for the for the students to retry this particular activity as, as many attempts as possible so that uh, the information will be retained uh, on their minds. But just so you want to know how to disable retry function from H5B. So let me just go back here from the settings, then go to course administration and then content bank. So sample flashcard, right? This one, and then we're going to edit. So for every H5P assessments, we always have uh, behaviors. Let me just check this one, if we can restrict, uh, I think for, yeah. Yeah, I think for flashcard, we cannot uh, disable the retry because we don't have the, the retry button, for at least from this page. Let me just check from the actual, uh, from the actual activity. So let me just go back from the course page. And then from here, we can use the settings on the right side. So H5P options, these are some of the options. And then for the grade, let me check if we have, uh, yeah, I think we cannot, at least for flashcard, we cannot disable the retry button, right? Okay, yeah. But we will try to look at other activities and how to disable the retry button. So that's how you create flashcards. Any question for flashcards? You're, you are free to turn on your videos or turn on your uh, webcams or your mics if you want. 
can also use the chat box. So based on data, our uh, users who really explore much on H5B are users coming from the ECS or the early childhood. And I guess we have participants coming from early childhood, right? We have Mom um, Deborah, we have Mom um, Jopani, I think. Uh, we have Mom um, Credo, yeah. Uh, that's okay, Mom. That's okay. All right, so that's uh, that's how flashcards works. And next is, would be about um, see image pairing. So you have two sets of images, and then what are you going to do? You're just, you're just going to pair the images. Like for example, in this case, we have like the 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 silhouette of the animals, and then you have like the skin tone or this is colors of the animals, right? So how do you pair those sets of images? So going back to the H5P website, just to give, it a, uh, just to give us a context, how does image pairing works in an actual activity? So here, this is image pairing, and I will be using this particular example for the demonstration. So what we're gonna do, uh, what, what the students are gonna do is they're just going to uh select a particular image on the left side and then drag that image to its uh, corresponding pair on the right side so let me check i think the flamingo that should always be color pink let's just see Sige lang. i'll just try i am really not sure about this one and then let me check oh there you go so i i got the i think this is the cheetah and the leopard uh interchange pero sige lang. so that's that's basically how how h5b image pairing works i have a question for ma'am rola what about the video sir if i'm going to use the h5p yes yes ma'am uh, as, as what i've said before we started uh we do have the interactive video this particular activity this one i, I hope you are referring to the interactive video ma'am this one so no, for sir, uh, uh like like not the interactive sir like mm -hmm. kanang video rabito it reads sura na ko siya kuan sa it's 5b for example is it possible what do you mean uh not the vi interactive. video lang ma'am mm -hmm. so like uh -oh. video good siya nga wala yung mga interactions right yes sir pero it's mm -hmm. 5b akong gamitan for college mm -hmm. like <clears throat> yeah like I have a, I need to have a video about um, missing plus mm -hmm. for my particular subject. And then after that video, I have some questions. So interactive, mm -hmm. radi, ang, dili siya pwede ka ng, like, ano ba sir? Yes, ma'am. If you the want to. usual na video mm -hmm. lang. Pwede po siya, ma'am. Uh, there, there are actually many ways to implement uh, the, the one that you want to implement. So like, for example, we can use this part. You can use the H5P with interactive video. Then we will not just be inputting interactives during the actual video. So the interactives will be done after the playing of the video. Or you can also have it okay. in such a way that you can upload the video in, in a video hosting platforms like YouTube. Then just play the video on your site. And then you can just uh, create another separate activity about the video. So, dili yun de siya pwede sir nga katong like ako mong plan is I have this mga una literature about this particulars uh topic and then after that I will show you I will show them the the video with the use of the it's five B and then mura ba siya sequential sir nga after that muna ilang in next after viewing the video of that particular topic and then they need to ko ana po ana po kay lai ang murag sequential ba siya sir sunod sunod ang ako ang activity but part of it is the video nga using h5p ana ba ah may akong ikuan yes ma'am so for example ma'am if if really there's no need to to incorporate uh, interactions in the actual video video and that the students are just going to watch the video and then they're going to answer 
particular sets of activities immediately after watching the video, then what you can do, ma'am, is um, you can implement restrict access. So, para sequential siya, para dili sila maka-access to the different activities until such time that they're gonna watch this particular video. So, pwede na siya, ma'am, restrict access, ma'am. Um, pwede, pwede, ma'am, you're, you're just going to create different activities and sets of videos, but the students will be restricted to access to those particular activities, not unless mo watch sila for a particular video. Pwede na siya, ma'am, restrict access. But for the H5P, ah, okay. ma'am, it's, it's more on the interaction, ma'am. So like, for example, the mm. video part, this is really uh, the use of the H5P for video. Yeah, incorporating uh, assessments, incorporating uh, questions or interactions in the video. But in terms of okay. uh, just using the H5P to upload video, I think for that one, mas mm -hmm. lighter and mas efficient gamito ng YouTube. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. Sige. Okay, sir. Okay, pwede Thank you, sir, Jade. Up. Yes, ma'am. Uh -uh. You can also have it, ma'am, in such a way that, like, for example, this is a quiz, right? Or an assignment. So, part of your assignment, like here, uh, let me just mm -hmm. show you an example. So, if this is an assignment, okay, I'm just going to add an assignment. Then, on the description, you can always include a video. So, pwede ni mo na siya butangan dire video, ma'am. Like, I'm just going to include a particular video. Just say, si Blippi na lang, ano, not best, si Blippi na lang. Ah, sige. Sige, sir. I'm fan of watching Blippi. Di ba ito? My son is fan of watching Blippi. That's why I have Blippi. Okay. So, here, and then, you can incorporate the video. Then, you can ask, like, these are the questions for an instance. And this is question one. Sorry. And then question two for instance. And then just going to save and return to course. Oh, sorry. This is sample assignment. Assignment. And then save and return to course. So like, like something like this, ma'am. So when they open the assignment, they will be prompted to look at the video that was incorporated in the description of the assignment. And immediately after that, they just have to answer what is required of this particular assignment. Um, so I like sir um times sir ing ani yung ako ang giko answer uh like for example I have this topic one di ba normally sa ato answer sa ato ang soul is we have this um what do you call this open sa kung kaya na ako para makita na ako sige ma'am so sa topic one we have this uh like for example sa create more ako sa assignment then sa assignment na ako ibutang dia sir and then I have here sa description now in my description I have kanang like for example na ako ipabasahon I have the description of the topic that I'm going to to kuan bitaw kanang mui ako ipabasa nila and then after right after that description na I na I mismo makita nila ng video gamay makita nila sir mismo sa ako gi upload na right after my description kaya di ba normally sa ato ah separate man ang video sa ato my soul what do you mean separate ah yeah like like the video is from the YouTube some something like that oh 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 kaya ng oh sir kaya bang right after sa ako ang description ako yung texti ha and right after na aji gamay siyang video kaya I have ah during my kuan bitaw na ako sa sa katung sa testa na ako Yes, na ako lang ko sa ilang kuang kay right after the description mm -hmm. then nanay video makita yun nila sir na gamay ra na appeal then after ana iya na text na pod something like that dili siya po kaparis ato ang separate separate ang ato a ah. pwede na siya possible na siya pero I know they're using h mm -hmm. pero makita mismo sir right after the kuan kanang sa test da bitaw na style nila uh, kay oh. it's more on uh -uh. Sige ma'am, like for example, ma'am, ato, ato lang ni siyang i-try. I think I, I, I got your point na ma'am. 
So, pwede po niya na to. I just, I'm just going to delete this one. I'm just going to add a new H5P. Okay. So, what you can do, ma'am, is from this end, this is like a sample video. This is yes. where you're going to input the description from this part. Oh, yes, uh -oh. sir. Yes, sir. So, let's let just say this is okay. uh, the description. Right? Ito uh, lang daghan ng pera. For example. Oh. Yeah. Then, okay, right after, Anna, sir, then right after, sir, this is the video. Yes, uh -huh. ma'am. So, we're just going to upload. Ako lang i-download di siyang video. Anyway, this is just a 3 MB video. So, let's just forget about the, the interactions uh -huh. or the inter the interactivity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And then, I'm just going to upload it from here. So, choose file and then this one, upload. Okay, lagi. Let me just re-upload. Ah, oh, there you go. And then save and return to course. So, ako lang siyang i-edit. So, here, para maklaro mam ang description, ako lang siyang ibutang o kaan. Nasha. So you have the uh -huh. description and then you have the, the video on the bottom. And then I'm just mm -hmm. going to display the description on the course page. So Marsha, it's something like this, Bob. So this is the H5P file. And then if the students mm -hmm. click this actual file, they can see the description at the upper portion. And then yes. there's a video. <laughs> ah, okay. So yeah, you can do something like this, Lang Mam. You can use H5P for this or for this particular setup, you could also use just this, just the label, ma'am, or assignment if they need to submit something. So what you can do from the assignments tab, para mura siya inanig puro ma. Uh, yes, it's it's possible to use H5P, but in this case, it's not efficient because H5P is designed for interactive assessment. But if you don't have any interactions in the video, what you can do is something like this. So let me just go back to... Uh, our course page and uh, just use let's just say assignment na lang atong gamiton and then yes sir sample assignment and from here para medyo align ang imuhang mga contents ma'am you can use mm -hmm. uh, the grid or you can also use the table let's just say we will use the table na lang so we have number of rows we have two rows and we have two columns to say three. Asa makita, sir? Pag ah, create, okay. di ba, din, assignment. Uh -oh. So usually when you create an assignment, assignment, this is the the usual settings page, ma'am, di ba? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh -oh. So what you can do is you can click the more options from the text box uh -huh. here. Ah, okay, okay, uh -oh. okay. And then you can use the table Ayun. so that you can specify the number of rows. But these are the rows and the columns in terms of lines. These are not visible. Mm -hmm. This is just for uh, organization purposes. So just okay. have to click table. Mm -hmm. And then we have, uh, let's just say we have two rows and three columns. Create table. So from here, pwede ni mo din ibutang imong description, ma'am. These are like the sample description. Okay. Uh, R, and then let's just. Okay. And then, pwede na ni Mudini sa tunga ibutang ang video. Let's just say, this is the video, right? So, here. And then, let's make everything in the middle. Save and return. So that, when the student... Kidrag ra ni Moto, sir? The what, ma'am? Ang unsa ang kidrag, ma'am? The video? Ako lang gikapi ang URL, ma'am. This one? The upper, the upper oh, part. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, just, yes, yes, yes. So from YouTube, just copy the URL mm -hmm. and just paste it here. And then you can always save and display description on the course page. So when the students click the assignment, there, there's, this, there's the description yeah. at the top. And then you have a small video on the bottom. Okay. But usually, Without sir, the video should be Pilar and Chaka Koan. Uh, for oh, YouTube yeah, videos, ma'am, that's fine. Size. Unsa ang length? Since we are just linking the video, man, uh, we're not actually ah. uh, in, in putting the video from the system, so that would be fine. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Pero i download sa ako siya, sir, sa kwan. It's 5P. 
ang mga video or direct na siya. Like, I have this, di ba, naman ka katong table, sir? And then yes, I just, ah, dili na dikinhalan. I-save ra na ko ang URL and, oh, okay, okay. Got it. Yes, ma'am. There's no need to download okay, the mas videos. Okay, mas dali mag Yep. Oo. So, pag nana ka sa YouTube, just copy the oh. URL and then paste it in your, and then for example, paste as assignment. And then, yes, ma'am. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Katong na sa table. Okay, yes, then. The okay, table. got it na, sir. Okay, ma'am. Sige. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome, ma'am. Sige. So, let's proceed to our second example. Let's just go to topic four. Uh, our second example is about, uh, I mean, I think we're done now or we, we haven't done but I, image pairing. So how do you create image pairing using H5P, right? So I have, I think I've shown the, the example now of what image pairing looks like from the H5P site. So how do you do it as a teacher? Uh, just have to go to the settings and then go to your content bank. And then from here, always just click add and then just look for image pairing, image pair. And then this is just a sample image pairing. Okay, so the description is drag the images from the left to match them with corresponding images on the right. This is the default description. Now, for some reason, if you want to change or if you want to add description, then you can do it from this uh, field right so card one so the card one is your first uh, pair so we're going to add an image h5p image pairing so this is my first card and the matching image is here p1 okay now you are required to input an alternative text for image just so for those students with uh, who needs tools for uh, uh, that the text is ready to be text to speech tools uh, needed by visually impaired users. So if you have students who are visually impaired, of course, uh, they cannot view the, the image, right? So you are required to input an alternative text for this image. So let's just say this is a bird. No, I don't know what really this bird is. It's Let's just call it bird one. Sorry for that. And then that's it. Uh, you can also have the alternative text image for, or the alternative text for the matching image, but this one is not required. Okay, so that's your pair one. So pair two, let's proceed. Uh, let's just use this one, okay. We're going to add an image, I2, and then this one is the P2. And then, I'm really not sure if this is a cheetah or a leaf wire. Let's just say this is a cheetah for sample purposes. And then, uh, we're going to add another card. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm pretty sure this is a horse. Oh, no, this is a zebra. Yeah, it's a zebra. Okay, and then the text would be, it's, it's a zebra. Okay, and then I'm just going to add another card uh, this one so gani tawo gani ma malfi this is a it's at the back of my mind yeah it's a peacock thank you for that okay and then we have the last one is i think this one is a flamingo if i'm not mistaken so i'll just use this one so we just have five images Lang for for example, uh, flamingo. Okay, that's it. Now uh, we do have some behavioral settings here. Let's check what are the available settings. Uh, you can add a button for retrying when the game is over. So see, for this particular uh, assessment or for this particular H5P activity, by default, retrying is not an option. But if you want that the students can retry. They can, you can always check add a button for retrying when the game is over. So let's just, lang, let's just uh, let the students retake these assessments because this is just a formative assessment, for example. And then let's save it. And then don't forget once in the question bank or in the content bank, always download the file so that you can use it in your course page. 
Okay. So now that the file is downloaded, just go back to your course page and upload the file. H5P. This is a sample image pairing. Okay, and then let's upload the file. And upload this file. Okay, and then just save and return to course. So I'm going to switch role to student just so that we can check the activity from the student's perspective. Sorry, switch role to student. And as a student, for example, I'm going to open this uh, image pairing H5P activity. This file can't be displayed because it's been uploaded by a user that required capability. Oh, I didn't, this is my first time. Let me just go back here. Let me return to my normal role. And okay. So this is how it's look like, right? So you have images on the left side, which are to be paired from the images on the right side. So any question for image pairing? I think we can use this one. We have thousands of, and not thousands, but we have multiple scenarios on, on our different courses where we can implement image pairing. So for example, maybe on, on our course, let's just say uh, senior high, we have MTech, then we can implement image pairing. Let's just say computers, and then we have computer parts. If this is an output or if this is like an input uh, part, then we can, we can also do that. So it's, it really depends in terms of usage, sa, sa need sa ato mga courses. Right? And really for, for image pairing, it's super easy to implement in terms of how to set it up, how to implement it to the students. Just make sure that you have two paired images and then that's it. Okay? So if you have no more question, we can then proceed to our last H5P assessment activity, which is about um, image sequencing. So for sample purposes, I have planets, and then we will have some instruction on how do we uh, sequence the following planets. Uh, sir Jade? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sorry for mm. the interruption, mm. uh, sir. Mm. Um, um, Prido has question. Ah, okay. Uh, from Mom Credio, sir, can it be a picture of a word and a picture of anything else? Yes, ma'am. So what you can do is just convert this particular word or you can use paint to save the words as images and then with paired with anything else. That can be implemented, ma'am, yes. Thank you, ma'am. You're up. Okay. So, or uh, if not using with paint, you can just um, design the words from, let's just say PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, and then just use the snipping tool if you're using a Microsoft or if, you, if you're using a Windows PC or laptop. And then, yeah, just save it as an image and then pair it with, with any other images. Okay. So next is image sequencing. So let's just see how image sequencing looks like uh, from the H5B website here. So this is uh, examples of image sequencing. So since I will be using this one, so let's just look at other examples. Okay, US presidents, and then we have body parts. So the instruction is order the parts of the human body from top to bottom. So like this, so as a student, you just have to, something like this, I hope, yeah, you just have to arrange the, the human parts from top to bottom, right? So you have this one and then shoulder and then I really don't know what's next. I think we have, ah, sigara, just so solution. And then, so this is basically the right, Answer, we have the forehead, the ear, the mouth, up to the foot. So that's how you implement, uh, or that's uh, one of the examples in, in terms of usage of image sequencing. So how do you do that? How do you create something like this? So from your course, 
from your course page. Again, let's go to, let's stay at the topic five, and then let's go to the content bank. Content bank is for H5P contents. Question bank is for the questions of your course. Okay, so I hope you're not confused with the question bank and the content bank. So content bank, and then we're going to add another H5P interactive content, which is known as image sequencing. Okay, so the title, let's just say, this is a sample image sequencing activity. Sorry. And then there's a default instruction drag to arrange the images in the correct sequence. So, in this particular task, uh, I will be changing the instruction to uh, arrange the planets according to size from smallest to largest. Okay. And then by default, you have three images, but you can always add an image if there's a need. So I will be adding the list of images in this particular page. But take note that in terms of adding the images, make sure that they are in the right uh, arrangement because the, the, the system will actually randomize the arrangement in terms of uh, displaying the, the, the activity to students. So here, let me just check it here. So, sorry, let me just close this. So the first, the smallest planet is Mercury. So I'm going to add here, sorry, image sequencing. Mercury is the smallest planet. Second is Mars. Then image number three is Venus. Okay. And then you can, by the way, uh, you have to, have a description of the image. This is Mercury, so. Image is, this is uh, Mars, the red planet, and then we have Venus. So to add an image, just uh, click add image, and then here, so we have Earth, sorry, cancel. And then we're going to add another image. We have Neptune. And then I'm gonna add another image. So we have Uranus. So what else? Uh, let's have Saturn. And of course, the largest planet which is Jupiter. Ah. All right. So by the way, if you want to add audio files, like uh, you want to, let's just say, you want to record yourself uh, an audio file about the description, then you can always do that. You can always put it here. Okay, so these are the sample planets, or these are the planets that needed to be arranged in terms of the sizes from smallest to largest planet. Let, uh, let's take a look at the behavioral settings of this particular H5P interaction. So there, by default, you have a show solution button for the game. You can also disable this one. Uh, you have the retrying when the game is over. By default, it's enabled. You can disable it. and. Let's just say, for example, the student um, closed the course or let's just say accidentally closed the window. Then once they open the, the, this particular activity, you have a button here that says uh, add a button for resuming the current state. Para ma-resume lang sila. Okay? So that's it. By default, these are all enabled. If you want to disable this particular functions, then you can just uncheck the checkboxes corresponding to the different actions. And from here, just click save. And once saved in your content bank, just download. 
go back to the course page, make an H5P activity with a blue background. Sample image uh, sequencing. And then just upload the file. Okay, upload this file. And save and display. Let's try to save and display. So as a student, they're just going to arrange the planets. So this, the instruction is arrange the planets according to size from smallest to largest. If you notice, it's been randomized by the system, right? So si student na ang mo arrange and uh, depende kung unsang feeling nila sakto nga correct answer, then they can check. Like in this case, I only have one planet with within the right uh, position, which is which is Saturn, second to the largest planet. So resume, or you can also show the solution. Now, if you want to retry, you can just click retry, right? So yeah, that's it in terms of examples of H5P interactive contents. Again, don't limit yourself to the, the examples that we just showed today because there are multiple H5P interactive contents that you can use. Uh, feel free to visit h5p.org so that you can check and look at the different assessments with examples. Ma'am Alfie? Any question? Yeah, thank you, Sir Jade. Any questions? Is it? Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Is it applicable for college? Kanang mga ina sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. It, it, mm, it really depends on like what you are trying to achieve in your course. So if you have a particular topic and then if you feel like there's a need for them to, uh, if I mean, if you feel like there's a need for you to use one of the H5P interactive contents, then that that's fine. Okay. Sir, ako nang i-apply to yung ganyan, yung ganyan, sir. I can see the, the, what do you call this? The, the, the video. Ang text ay nakatuan na katong i-add na ko nga URL. I don't. Mm, is it copied directly from the YouTube URL, ma'am? Yes. Can you send us the URL, ma'am, the chat box? Uh, I just have to, this is a public video, ma'am, right? Yes, Sige, ma'am. Kaya yes. para atong i-try. Okay, you can do this chat box, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Ito ba niyo? Okay na. That one, sir. This is not a, a YouTube video, ma'am. This is coming from a search result from a search engine na Bing. So um, I think, yes, ma'am, you really have to open the video in YouTube and then copy the URL. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Got it, now, sir. Okay. Good. Yes, ma'am. Okay, any more question before... Uh, by the way, don't forget to answer. Steve, do we have a survey or post-seminar survey? Okay. So, Steve. Yes. Yes, Ma'am Alfie. Yeah, we have. <laughs> ah, okay. So, kindly answer our post-webinar survey. This is actually for us to uh, enhance more in terms of how do we proceed with the trainings. And it's very important for us. Also for the certificate, you need to answer the, the, the webinar survey. Sir, last question. Sure, ma'am. In my content, in my mm -hmm. content, what do you call this? Content bank. Con content, content bank. bank. Mm -hmm. still, uh, no content available. If I'm going to add, the I don't know if I add, no, no, I don't know if I add, so add, mm -hmm. like, na may daghan da rin kapilian ng sir, 
Mm. Yeah. I, can see, I can see that if I... Ah, okay, okay. And then after any pag na, like the image sequencing, I think this is more uh, applicable for me in my first year to them. Uh, after this, kung saan ako siya i-upload, right? Yes, ma'am. Mm. So, pwede po niya gamitin, ma'am. Like, for example, you have image or you have sequence of steps. Then you can convert the steps into images. And then you can do image sequencing. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Sige. So, after ma-upload, isa pa kumabalik sa atong course. And then I need to, kung ano, to really attach na ko, right? Yes, ma'am. Ito mm -hmm. ko maaari content back. We have to download first, ma'am. Once we're done, we download it and then we upload it in our katong page, katong sa content portion. And I think, uh, sir, Jade also has um, shown you a different way to upload. Sakto ba to, sir, Jade? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any more questions before we end this, uh, this session? All right, Ma'am Alfie, I think there's no more question, no, Ma'am. Yes, yeah, so thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Um, hopefully, we could uh, give you more uh, features of H5P as we go along. So, aturang hinay hinayon, no? So that we could master this and then we'll move on to more um, advanced uh, features of H5P. Thank you very much, Ugmayong Buntag. Thank you, everyone. Good morning once again.